I'm Daniel. I'm Jay-Z. This is Just My DIY. This is a huge milestone for us. We have officially upgraded to a proper heat press. We have been using the Cricut Pancake Makers. Easy presses. For most of our sublimation needs. But we noticed some inconsistent results with them, having to do with a number of factors from what we were pressing on to the materials and a few other things. So we have upgraded to the StarCraft 8-in-1 Swing Away heat press. Mm -hmm. It's a 15 by 15 inch heat press and it comes with a lot of different attachments. It's got superhero power bands. Those are mug press attachments of which you get four. You get two plate attachments as well as a hat press. We're going to take you through the unboxing and show you how this thing was packed up, show you how to connect all the various pieces, and we'll do a test press sublimation using the main platen. It will be impressive. <laughs> Let's get started. So we bought this at Brilliant Vinyl, got it home and up the stairs. I got it up the stairs. It's really heavy, like 80 pounds, but because it's so heavy, you'll find that it is very well packed. And we open it up, and wow, when you first see it. <gasps> So we throw the instructions off to the side like we usually do. And we're going to need those later. <laughs> like we usually do. <laughs> and we'll show you how nicely packed this is. Like, just like a nice puzzle. So we start pulling out the attachments, the mug presses, the plate presses. It's all in there pretty firmly, so, you know, don't overdo it. You don't want to damage anything getting it out, but it's just styrofoam holding it in, so hopefully it doesn't damage it. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't, but everything is very tightly packed, so way to go, StarCraft. There's the main press. The reason we chose a swing away rather than a clamshell heat press is because it's known for being better at getting even pressure across a variety of materials with different thicknesses. So once we get everything laid out on the table, it's time for us to start getting to know our new heat press. So you'll notice that there is a black pressing pad that's stuck to the top. It should be on that bottom plate. We do figure that out eventually. One thing to keep in mind with swing weight heat presses is that if you put that top plate all the way at the back, they can tump over, so just be mindful of that. One thing that we couldn't find online before we purchased were the actual full dimensions of the machine, so we're going to give that to you now. The full footprint is 19 inches deep by 15 and a half wide and is 26 inches high. Now when you swing it open, which is important to know how much space you need, when it's swung to the side, it's 24 and a half inches wide. But you're gonna need a little bit more than that for the clearance, because when it's at a 45 degree angle, it's 27 inches wide. And fully open front to back, and notice I'm holding it. It is 34 and a half inches deep when it's fully open. The base itself, so you'll know what how deep your table needs to be that you set it on is 13 inches wide by 14 and a half inches deep and it's four and a half inches from the table to the bottom of the bottom plate now we're going to show you how everything attaches starting with the main press so we're cutting away the security over the plug there's a little notch in the bottom of it which matches the notch in the bottom of the plug into the powered unit Plug it in, screw it in. You start playing with your tensioning knob in the back, like right there. You can see it lowers it. And at a certain point, it's impossible to press, so that's too low. You want to make sure and test this a couple of times before you actually put a material in there so you get your appropriate tension for the material you are pressing. See right there, easy. Now is easy. <laughs> And here we show you, we did figure out that the black pad does go on the bottom press, so that's how it's actually supposed to look before you start pressing. We did notice that there was this electrical wire that went to the top, and it took us a second, but we figured out that's what starts the timer. Just a little tidbit of information for you. Now we're gonna show you how to attach the plate press. I'm going to remove the top element and set it up with a plate press. You just undo the, unplug the unit, 
and set it off to the side in an area that will not leave it damaged. Take the plate press, slide the wing nuts into posture, tighten them firmly, but they do not have to be superhuman. And again, check your tensioner to make sure that it gets the appropriate amount of pressure. And the plug-in for this is actually on the side, not the front of that main control unit. Now we're gonna show you the hat press. So for the hat press, you do have to take off the bottom plate and just be aware that it's really close to that support column in the back. So the first time that we moved it, we did ding up the back a little bit. To prevent that from happening until we find a better solution, we're just gonna put a piece of tape on it while we're moving it back and forth because the edges are a little sharp. So to get the bottom plate off, you just slide it backward and pull it right up. You can see that it does touch that back column but we may be able to adjust this later through those little bolts on the bottom to reposition the plate on its mount. We take the hat press plate itself and just the same, put it down, slide it forward. And on the top, same thing, using those two wing nuts, tighten those down. Firmly, but not super humid. <laughs> no need to use the power cuffs. <laughs> This one also plugs into the side and then you'll want to check your pressure again with your knob. As you put it down, you see we can't quite get it all the way down so we're going to have less pressure and there you go. Do note that the bottom plate does wiggle a little bit. We can probably adjust those bolts on the bottom which we might do later. But for now we're going to take this back off, put the main press back on and then show you the mug press. The mug press can be used with the platens in place for it has its own standalone frame and four pieces of presses, two straight, two tapered. It plugs into the side of the unit just like the other attachments do. Right here. We do recommend leaving the main you know the main plate unplugged just to make sure that you know the power sources go to the right areas. Mm -hmm. And you'll see there's just a little handle that you use. There is a tensioning bolt, that round silver nut you see there is your pressure. And to change it out, you remove these four knobs, screw knobs. <laughs> Technical term. Yep. <laughs> and you can just slide that piece right out, probably towards the back of the unit. And then take the one you wish to have in its place, slide it in. We use the tensioner on it to help get the, the flat of the frame in place to match the... Yeah, you'll see it was a little off kilter when you first put it on, but don't worry, it obviously just pops right down. So if that happens to you, don't worry about it. Just settle it right down into place, screw in your little knobs, and feel free to open your tensioner. Plug it into the side of your unit again. That's voila. Walk down a flight of stairs. <laughs> He's too tall to fit in frame with the heat press right now. <laughs> We're just gonna put on a gun show. Ooh, 92. Nice. <laughs> okay, now that we've shown you guys how everything hooks up to the machine, it's time to turn it on and we're going to show you how the control panel works on this, as well as do a temperature test to see how hot the various surfaces get. Also, before you start playing with such things like very hot elements, you should have a nice fire extinguisher ready and available. Mm-hmm, well, let's get started. So now we're finally going to plug it in. Just know that we did have it unplugged as we were working with all the attachments, as you should too. We turn it on. This thing doesn't come with much paperwork, but the one thing it does have in there is telling you what the various settings are, which are really good. P1 is going to be your temperature, and you can move it up and down with the arrows. And once you have where you want it, you click the set button at the bottom. Second one is your time. We're just gonna do a quick press for our first one. Third one is Fahrenheit or Celsius. We wanna leave that on Fahrenheit. And the last one is the auto off timer. That's the number of minutes before it auto shut off. But don't rely on this. Always turn off and unplug your machine. How long did it take to heat the machine up to 400 degrees? 
15 minutes. There you go. So we're checking the temperature at the top once it's up to temperature and we're noticing that it's about 200 degrees varying from different spots. The handles themselves are still only about 90 degrees and that makes it very easy to handle uh, with the handles. <laughs> But don't touch that top plate because it is very hot. Now we do look at the actual heat of the press itself. When we saw this online, it did say that technically it's a 14.5 inch by 14.5 inch uh, heat press, which we did find that the outside half inches of the plate were significantly lower temperature. So definitely keep your designs to 14 and a half inches. But otherwise it was fairly consistent temperature throughout. So we knew that we were ready to do a test press shortly so the first thing we did was we just put it down make sure our timer's working and then opened check, it back up and check the temperature of that little cushioning pad mm -hmm. and it was like around 200 degrees when we first pulled it up again it was just 15 seconds but the heat dissipated quickly so now we're going to do our sublimation set up our butcher paper to protect the ink from infusing into anything we don't want it we're going to iron out this piece of polyester with a little bit of spandex in it and we iron out any moisture get it to be smooth and flat it only took a couple of seconds yeah so it was very hot even though we only kept that down for about 10 seconds this design is just an extra one we had laying around we bought the image on design bundles we will link that below two sheets of butcher paper on top and i decided to add a little more pressure because there wasn't quite enough on that first test and now we're going to let it sit for 50 seconds at 400 degrees. We left and pull it hot. And you can see, look at that. What a perfect first press with the sublimation. No ghosting, no craziness. It worked beautifully. We are super pumped with how this first sublimation turned out. And we can't wait to keep playing with the Starcraft 8 in 1 heat press. We will let you know that we have a lot of great content planned with this, including a video on each of the types of attachments. So you should subscribe and ring the bell to stay tuned for future videos featuring the StarCraft Swing Away 8-in-1 heat press. Yes. And if you like this video, then you should click that like button, leave a pressing comment, and of course know that the StarCraft is linked down below as well as other materials for your pressing needs. Don't forget to connect with us on all of our socials. Those links are below as well as the link to our blog at JustMikeDIY.com. You are not the karate kid! <laughs>